Uh, we pick up in our story on 2 Kings chapter 4. This is a wealthy woman. She's in a good position. When the opportunity came for Elijah to do something good for her, he asked her, you know, what should be done? You, you've been painstakingly concerned and careful for us. You've gone through all of this expense. What can be done for you? Now, understand this. Elijah was a man of influence. He spoke to the king. He was a man of power and authority. What he said would come to pass. But notice this woman was in a good place. When he asked, how can I be a blessing to you? Her response was, I'm good. I want you to say that out loud. I'm good. I'm in a good place. I'm good. You know, um, maybe you're online right now and, and you're in a good place. Uh, maybe you're retired and, and you're, you're comfortable with your housing and you're in a good relationship and with your family. And, you know, financially, you're not struggling, you, your transportation is well, you're in a good place. Obviously, God wanted to do something good for her because he, she had did something good for him. And you can't beat God given. And so uh, Gehazi, Elisha's prophet, uh, servant, spoke up and said, well, she, she doesn't have a child and her husband's old. And immediately, Elijah got it in his heart what the Lord wanted to do. And he spoke it. Immediately, he said, go call the woman. The woman came back, stood in the door. And he said, about this time next year, you're going to be holding a son. And turns out it was the great desire of of her heart. It was something that she had longed for, desired, maybe when they were younger, but for whatever reason, they, you know, she had never become a mom. But the man of God spoke it, and sure enough, it came to pass. What am I saying to you? There is a next level for every one of us. If you're a part of Faith Family, if you just happen to be watching this service right now, I'm here to tell you there is a next level for you that God wants to elevate you into. And we've been talking during this mini message before the main message about sowing to reach your next level. This woman was in a comfortable place. Maybe again, you're online and you're retired and, and you're good. But God knows the desires of your heart and he can cause to come into your life that thing that you greatly desire. Maybe you want to leave an inheritance for your children's children's children. Maybe you want to, you know, uh, travel or, or maybe there's something in you that you've kind of given up on and you've just been riding out this trajectory. No matter where this message finds you today, I'm challenging you as I'm about to minister to you on this subject. Find yourself in this story with this widow woman. There was a question that came up in my heart this week uh, that I knew was for me to ask you. Would you go through such a, and this is one of our notes, love. <clears throat> Would you go through such a significant expense for your pastor or your church? Would you, would you go through such an expense? I mean, adding on to your house, building a, a second level or building, you know, extending in the garage or to add on in anywhere in your home is going to cost tens of thousands of dollars. You know, we know they didn't have a dollar back in that day, but money was still a means of trade. They spent a considerable, a significant amount of money for their pastor just simply when he came by to be able to have a place. My question to you today is, would you go through that kind of significant expense for your pastor or for your church? Uh, if, you, if you would, then you are going to reach a next level. Amen. And if you won't, if, that, if that's just too much in your mind, then you'll continue, as it were, on the level that you've been on. I want to take this moment to say a very special thank you to all of you who sent texts to check on my family and I 
as we all went through this storm. Um, if you're not connected to our text system uh, immediately on Monday, I sent a text to check on you all. Uh, again on Tuesday, I had an unction from the Lord and just wanted to encourage you. I wanted to extend help, but you know, essentially, power was off for uh, so many millions of people, and water uh, was affected by that as well. But there were several of you that you know your home remained warm and and your water was still running, and uh, many of you just reached out to open your home to us and. And we want to thank you. We truly felt loved and honored. Uh, even when some of you found out on Wednesday night that we were still without water, um, you know, you followed up. Hey, you know, are you all OK? Do you need anything? And I want to say thank you. The reason why I say that is because I can imagine how the prophet of God felt when this woman extended her home to him. And, and I can see the desire to want to speak blessings and, 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 and call for God to do something good on their behalf. Uh, this, this situation just made me appreciate uh, this text all the more. Uh, we were offered a warm bed to sleep in and a place to bathe. Wow. You know, and I can't thank you enough so much for that. Now, uh, so I want to talk to you today about sowing to reach your next level. If you don't recognize that we're living in the end of times, then please go back, listen to Wednesday night's service. God gave us at Faith Family Church a prophetic word on the beginning of this year. In January, I preached that elevation is what God is saying, that this will be a year that will be known to us as a year of elevation that God is picking us up and throwing us beyond the usual mark that he wants to use us in his kingdom. We then proceeded in all of the month of January to give you a look at what's on your next level. In review, we said to you that there's seven good things. I'm a teacher. I need you to learn these things. So I know some of you, if you already know them, start putting them in, in the comments. Seven good things. We said there will be promotion, there will be increase. There will be abundance. We said to you that there would be growth, restoration. We said to you there would be victory and that there would be blessing. But we also said that there would be three tough things that you and I would experience on our next level. That the enemy would try to prevent the word of God from going forward. That he would try to bring about affliction and persecution. Affliction is pressure brought into your life uh, by circumstances or situation. And persecution, the P in persecution reminds me that it's pressure brought into your life by people, whether it be people close to you, people on the job, people that are strange to you. Persecution, affliction, and prevention. Three tough things that we're going to experience this year. And sure enough, man, I woke up on Tuesday morning in frigid temperatures and the word of the Lord came to me. This is affliction. And I sent out that text message to encourage you to count it all joy when you fall into different kinds of afflictions and persecutions. We said in that series, though, that there were two things that we needed to do in order to reach our next level. We said that it's going to take grace in order to reach our next level. Two things that were necessary, not that we needed to do, but that it would take grace to reach our next level and that it would take joy to reach our next level. Um, now, for the, for, the two, for the two necessary things, grace is unmerited. As it were, there's nothing you can do to earn it. And joy is absolutely a choice. But here's the secret about grace. You can receive more grace. How? There's two ways that you and I can receive more grace. And sowing is one of those two ways. 
I am asking you, I am pleading with you as your pastor, as one in spiritual authority, don't shun or push away from these, these teachings on you prospering financially. No, I am asking you to become a student of the laws of sowing and reaping. Become a student of the laws of sowing and reaping. Here's another important lesson that I want to share with you today. Make the kingdom your top priority. So over the next 20 minutes or so, before I get into the main message, I want to challenge you to learn to make the kingdom your top priority. Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 6, and let's look at verse 33. In Matthew 6, 33, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When I say top priority, I mean most important in your life. As you learn the laws of sowing and reaping, the, the, one of the most important, if not the most important law to learn is making the kingdom your top priority. The Bible says to seek first, not the Bible, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom and everything that the Gentile is seeking will be added unto you. They, they, they want a better life. They want better money. They want better housing. They want better transportation. They want better vacations. They want better retirement. And they do all that they do in order to live better. What I'm challenging you to do is to make the kingdom your top priority. And all of these things that are necessary in life, God will add them to you without sorrow. Glory to God. Put God first financially before anyone and anything else in your life, including you. When I talk about making the kingdom your first priority, I'm talking about you putting God first financially. I'm not talking about, well, God is, God is number one. I love God more than everybody, anything, but you don't make him a priority financially. So what I'm challenging you to do is to put God first. Come on. Put God first financially before anyone in your life. That means your kids or yourself or anything. In other words, make the kingdom your top priority. If you want to reach your next level financially, then you've got to do this. This is why tithing is so important. It puts God first financially. This also means if you're not tithing, so listen carefully, if, if you, you just got your annual, uh, you know, your, your W-2, I think it's W-2, whatever you get from the government, you know, from your job that tells you how much you earned last year that you can report on taxes, that you have to report on taxes, and you hold that against your giving statements, if you did not pass the bar of 10%, in your giving to the kingdom, to the kingdom, organizations and ministries that are preaching the gospel, then you have not put God first financially. That means you are more important and other things that you've chosen to do with your money is more important than God. And you will not reach another level financially until you learn to put God first. How is giving money to the church or the pastor making the kingdom of God my top priority? Maybe you're thinking that and asking yourself that right now. How is giving to the church? How is giving to the pastor making the kingdom my top priority? I just don't understand. I don't understand. You know, you said last week that we don't have to tithe. And I did say that last week, and I believe that with all my heart. And I don't say it because I just think it. There's no command in the New Testament 
that commands you to give God a tenth of your income. That's something you get to choose to do. Jesus said you ought to tithe. And listen, if you've made Jesus your Lord, and if your Lord says you should do this, guess what? You should do it. It shouldn't be like, well, I, I got a better idea. I know what I should do with my money. Thank you for that suggestion, but I'm good. No, if Jesus is your Lord and he says you should, then you should. But, 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 but maybe the question is, how is me giving 10% of my income to the church or and giving money to the pastor, how is that making the kingdom top priority? So I'm going to show you, that, I'm going to give you that, I'm going to give you the answer to this question because maybe that's you. I know a lot of you that do tithe and I want you to listen carefully because if you've made that selection and made that choice, it's important for you to understand that when you do like this widow woman did and spend tremendous amounts of money for the man and the woman of God, for the church to be able to preach the gospel, it's going to open up doors and windows in heaven to cause you to reach new levels financially. So let's get into this. <clears throat> First of all, let's look at what is the kingdom of God? What does the Bible say the kingdom of God is? In Mark chapter 1, verse 14, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom of God. Now, if you've been watching and, and dialing into Wednesday night broadcast, then this phrase preaching the gospel should be exciting to you. Gospel means glad tidings of good things. One of the definitions of, the, of gospel is good news or glad tidings of good things. But for those of us that have been on these Wednesday night studies, we're learning about the blessing. And in doing so, we came across a passage of scripture in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8, where the Bible says that God, listen to this, preached the gospel to Abraham. Now, I know a lot of you, the gospel means, Gen uh, not Genesis, gospel means Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because those are the gospels according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But the gospel was preached in Genesis, in chapter 12, when, when God said to Abraham that if you obey me, I'm going to say good things over your life that will enable you to have success. Well, listen what this verse says in Mark 1 and 14. After John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, we know that that means Jesus went around telling everybody that if you obey God, he will bless you. He will say some good things over your life that will enable you to prosper. So this text says Jesus went about telling everybody that if they obey God, then good is going to happen in his kingdom. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. Verse 15 says he preached the gospel of the kingdom saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. If you if you're listening, if you're looking at your Bible highlight or make a mental note that he said, not only did he preach the gospel of the kingdom of God, he said that the time is fulfilled and this thing called the kingdom of God is at hand. He says, repent and believe that if you obey God, he'll say something good over your life. So what is the kingdom of God, though, Pastor Stan? Well, kingdom is a compound word from what I've learned. It's made up of two parts, king and dumb, referring to a king and his dominion, his area of authority or dominion. So specifically, the kingdom of God is referring to God, the king, and his area of dominion. Now, you might think, well, 
God is king over all and has dominion over all. Well, God is king, but he does not have dominion in every area in the earth. And that's so important for you to learn. Because when you, when, as we're trying to answer the question, how does me giving money to the pastor or to the church, how does that make the kingdom, how is that me making the kingdom my top priority? Well, you've got to understand what the kingdom is and what's going on in the church. Well, God is not in dominion over every area in the church on earth or on earth. There are some areas God is not welcomed in on earth and that are off limits to him. Now, let me give you some scripture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 in the King James Bible, it says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. This is a powerful passage of scripture. So let's make sure we understand it. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the Bible is teaching us that God, big case G, is not the God of this world. It says that there is a little case G, God of this world. That means God is not in control of everything that happens on this planet. You mean to tell me that God is the one who caused this winter storm to come into Houston throughout from from Canada all the way down, seemed like to Mexico to bust people's pipes to cause, you know, some people that ended up losing their lives, animals that have lost their lives, people that have lost resources. Are you telling me that God? is responsible are you telling me that that was an act of god no there's no way that a person in their right mind would believe that god would bring such evil and death upon people you don't know god if you believe that But if you take time with us to learn the Bible, you'll understand that Jesus is the one that said there is a thief called Satan. He's the one that comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I am come, Jesus said, that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Let the church say amen. So understand and learn this. Second Corinthians 4, 4, the Bible is saying there is a God of this world who is blinding, listen, the minds of them that don't believe, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, what Jesus is preaching, what your pastor is preaching, what your church is preaching. He's preaching through us that if you obey God, he will bless you. In his kingdom, he will bless you in the areas where he has dominion. Whoo, this is good. The church is called to preach the gospel of the king and his area of dominion, dominion to all the world. The church is called your pastor. I am called. I've 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 given up architecture. I, I have a degree in architecture. Uh, I was in route to become an architect. I was very successful at it. I've done work as an architect, uh, but I laid that down for the call of God upon my life to preach the gospel of Jesus. I had a, a million dollar business laid it down to preach the gospel. Uh, I could literally stop preaching right now and make more money than I'm earning through salary right now doing other things um, that that God's graced me to do. But I've laid all of that down. If I was in the ministry for money, I would get out of the ministry because I know I could make more money doing other things. But I laid that down to preach the gospel, to preach that if you obey God, 
where money is concerned. That he'll say good things about you that will enable you to succeed and have success. The church is called to preach the gospel of the king and his area of dominion to the world. Now watch this. In Mark chapter 16, again, what we're doing right now is we're answering the question, how is me giving money to the church or, you know, honoring my pastor, giving money to my pastor, how is that making the kingdom my top priority? Well, I'm going to show you because the church, your pastor, is furthering the gospel. Your church is preaching the gospel. Listen, in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let me translate it. Go into all the world and preach that if people, people on the street, people in the church, that if people obey God, he will say something good to enable them to have prosperity and success in every area of their life. He said, go and preach the gospel. Do you know that it costs money to go? Uh, for example, this week, unexpectedly, well, I mean, it was something, you know, you have to repair vehicles. Uh, since we were down in the school, we have two large trailers that we pull every week to the school to set up church. Well, the vehicle that we've been using to pull those trailers to the church has had a very significant power steering fluid leak. Well, we take it to the shop. The shop wanted to charge $3,000 for repairs. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay, well, we got them down to just $1,931. Well, I mean, it takes money to preach the gospel, literally. Uh, you know, Xfinity or whatever internet service, they don't allow you to do this for free, the lights. So understand, when Jesus said to go and preach this gospel, it takes money to go. So in answering the question, how is me giving money to the church or my pastor making the kingdom top priority? It's because when you give, when you sow into the church, sow into your pastor or ministers, when you sow... <laughs> You are allowing the opportunity for people who don't know God to hear this good message and to receive eternal life. So when you support the church financially, when you support those who preach the gospel financially, you are making the kingdom a top priority. I pray that, you've, uh, that, you, that you receive this. Do you receive this today? And God will reward you for doing that. He will, those of you that have opened your homes and, and, and extend love, those that send financial support, those of us that are tithers at Faith Family Church, God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Now think, put these two scriptures together. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith is impossible to please God. Uh, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. Come on, y'all preach back to me. God is a, put it in the comments, he is a rewarder when you diligently seek him and his kingdom. What does that mean? When you make the gospel, the kingdom, your top priority, he will reward you. That woman was in a good place financially, didn't need anything. Maybe you're retired and you're on a good path. Go ahead and make the kingdom your top priority and watch what God does in your life. Watch, watch what God does in your children's life. Watch what God does in your grandchildren's life because you've made the kingdom. Am I preaching good? Your top priority. Amen. He is a rewarder of those who diligently advance him and his kingdom. Next week, we're going to talk about Mark chapter 4, verse 26. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should cast a seed in the ground. Think about that. What is the kingdom? Making kingdom proper, top priority. The kingdom is about sowing and it's about reaping. Decide to become a student of the laws of sowing and reaping in the kingdom of God. Praise God. Amen. Amen.